Lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. A couple of things have happened. We lost Gamer's Cave. Uh, that's the sad news. We're going to start with the sad news. Where we have been recording and doing stuff. Yeah, it's it's gone, unfortunately. That just means that uh, we'll have to, you know, reconvene and we're going to have to do it again. This channel isn't going anywhere. We're all hanging out still. It just, we lost a place to play, but we are working on creating a new one. Uh, with that being said, we are back with a deck profile. This one is going to be digital. Uh, mostly for my own sanity. So, what deck profile is it? Well, it's my favorite deck of all time, and we are blending the light with the dark. We have created Fiendsmith Horus Orchest. Let's get into it. Let's go the card by card, and I may even show a combo in this. Now, we're going to go through it card by card. Normally, I go engine by engine. Um, obviously, that's not as possible in a digital format. Uh, not for the cleanliness of the of the profile anyway so here's what we got we got three copies of ash blossom and joyous spring with a druis worm a magna hut and a sarnir um and then three droll and lock birds this is going to be silly be the hand trap and going second stuff so we've also got three droplet and three emperor so ash is obvious um as is droll droll is really strong in this format and Droplet gives us a secondary board breaker just in case, so we can play through things like Protos, as well as other interruptions and interactions, such as Apoloza and all the other shenanigans that are put out. So that's why Droplet is here. It's the most effective one at dealing with things like the Protos lock um, and things like that. And then 3 Imper is standard. The Sarni the Bysteels are because they're level 6s, their bodies. And they deal with the Horus, or not the Horus, the Fiendsmith package, which is incredibly good for trading. If you're going to trade for anything in this format, Fiendsmith is probably the best bet. So that's our hand trap lineup. We are running 12 hand traps with 3 board breakers, totaling in 15 going second cards. Uh, but all 15 of them are very strong going first or second, which is incredibly helpful, because our entire deck otherwise is light and darks except for one other monster. Uh, as for the Fiendsmith package, we are playing the one Lurie with the three Fiendsmith engravers and the one Tract. So here's the point. It's standard, and I have nothing else to add to that. This engine is super nice in this deck, because it's getting us two ways to protect the Orcus line, uh, with things like DD, DDD Wave High King Caesar, but it also gives us a way that if we don't see the Orcus package, we can bridge it with Beatrice. So it's a it's a double-edged sword. Like we have two options that we can go into of, of sixes uh, that are really solid. And in the event that this stuff is now all in the graveyard and I don't have access to like let's say Requiem, we have access to the SP Little Knight, the Moon. Uh, Moon of the Closed World, like we have a lot of options in the extra deck, so it's giving us extra bodies. Uh, and it's such a recursive engine, it just, there's no loss in playing playing it. Uh, if anything, it helps us in grind games, which can, is really nice because Orcus is pretty good at it anyway. Uh, speaking of Orcus, we're running three copies of Gearsu. It's the only normal summon in the whole deck. Uh, and then we're playing one copy of Symbol Skeleton. It's Monster Reborn, you only need one of it. Three Harp Horror, uh, the boy is back. Two Orcus Nightmare. One World Wand, and then we were playing uh, one Babel, one Return, and one Crescendo. That's it. It's a standard Orcus lineup. Um, you guys have heard this from me a hundred times. And then lastly is the Horus package, which is one Happy. Are you happy? I'm happy. Three Ho uh, Imseti, and then three King Sark. Normally, in a Horus deck, you'll cut a King Sark, and you absolutely can. It is definitely an option. Uh, you could cut a Sark and a Return for two more Hand Traps or going second cards. Uh, King Sark is just so strong, and the Imseti, you'll normally be discarding an Orcus name, uh, because there's a high amount of them. So being able to discard an Orcus name with Imseti, even if it gets ashed, it's not a big deal. And with three King Sark, it's more likely that you'll see it. So you can use this as the ash bait, so that you can make sure your hor your Harp Horror goes off, or you've got King Sark, and then you're able to get into things like, um number 90 uh, which is also incredibly helpful so you've got the option for number 90 and then if you're able to get into like wave high king caesar now you're nib proof so you can go into number 38 so you can play around uh spell cards and things like that so there's a lot of options with the horus package i wanted to make sure i had two options with both the engraver the fiendsmith engine and the horus engine and the horus engine you had two really great choices and obviously these two are very good in uh in grind games and that's the main deck for the extra deck, we're playing one Desiree and one Lacrima. 
Lacrima is to summon out another engraver, and then you're able to XC summon. Uh, it also burns, which is super nice. Uh, we got Beatrice, which we talked about, and Wi-Fi King Caesar, which we talked about. We're playing two copies of Ding Girsu. Um, I'm actually contemplating cutting this to one, but I like it, so I have it. But you could make the argument to cut one for an access code talker. It's not like it's hard to make in this deck. Uh, so it's it's up to personal preference. I just prefer Ding Girsu because it gives me an... I can also make it with the M. Seti Happies, uh, which is really nice in a like weird game states. Uh, then we got the number 38, the number 90, uh, Requiem, Sequence, two Galatea, one IP, one Moon, and one SP. Moon is probably the least made card, but... It is what it is. And then the side deck. Uh, right now, this is what I'm going with. It's mostly board breakers, because I think that those are going to be more impactful depending on the matchup. It's three nib, three cyclone, three dark ruler, a feather duster, double storm, and triple evenly. That's the deck profile, but there's more to this deck than meets the eye, and I'm going to show you some combos with this deck. So let's get into it. This is... This is the ball game. Um, all right, so what we're going to start off with is this is not an ideal hand, but it's completely playable simply because we open the Lurry. Uh, there's options we can do here. So the first thing we're going to do is go uh, Fiendsmith Engraver, which will let us add Tract to hand. Then you'll go Tract, and you'll add... Engraver to hand. And you'll pitch Lurry. Which I'm just going to go ahead and skip a step here and put it here. We're going to grave this Lurry to go into Requiem. And Requiem is a quick effect, which is super handy. So you'll send that to Grave and you will summon out an Engraver. And then you could put back the Lurry uh, to the bottom of the deck to special summon out engraver now here you can link to to make sequence now in this instance you want to have see you need to have sequence on the board uh for your lake material for harpoor because you drew into like one of the orcus names that's really strong and there's only six of them that you can realistically want to normal summon so what we're going to do here is use this effect and it will let us use the extra deck in the f the graveyard in the field. Um, so we have an engraver in hand, which is nice. So what we'll do is we are going to shuffle back all of these to the extra deck to summon Desiree, which is really solid. And now uh, we're going to shuffle that up real quick. Normal summon Harpoor. And ladies and gentlemen, we are off to the races here. Because this is without the Horus package, so we're in a pretty good spot that we can just go Wop, Wop, Galatea, who is protected by this. Now we can use Sequence's effect to put it to the Spell and Trap card zone. And just so we keep track of what's where, we're going to put a 1 on each of these just so we know whether that's that. Um, and now we're off to the races by going Banish Harpoor. We are able to Special Summon. Gearsu, which will declare the effect of Gearsu to dump Har or Orcus Nightmare. You'll use Nightmare Effect because you want the extra stuff here. Uh, you're going to dump that to dump World Wand. And then we'll go ahead and banish that to summon the Harp in defense mode. Now, if you were playing any rank fours, which you absolutely could do in this deck, which is kind of funny. You can absolutely continue doing more stuff here. We have two interruptions, actually, because we have the Link 2. So this is two interruptions right here. But we haven't used the Galatea yet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the Galatea to put this back in the deck. And your options are to either get a Crescendo, which gives you an Omni Negate, which is very strong. Because uh, you're going to get back into Galatea here soon. Or, uh, or you go for the Babel. I think the Babel here is more important. So we're going to go ahead and do Babel. We're then going to make Dingirsu. And we're going to put Dingirsu overlay that. Eat that. So we're going to put that there. Now, 
We need to get IP. But Dengirsu gives us protection from destruction effects, which is pretty nice in certain circumstances. And we can always just send it to the graveyard anyway, because we've got all this material on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and use Girsu and Harp to summon that IP right here, giving us the link material here to be able to link into SP during their turn, giving us another form of interruption, um, which then turns this thing Girsu into interruption because of Nightmare, which is super nice because we also have Harpoor, which will let us dump. And you can always set this, and now we're in a great spot. So for recap, we have the IP into SP, which is two interruptions. Uh, Dengirsu, which will turn itself uh, into an interruption when it's used as link material. So that's three. We have two with the Desiree, which is four and five. And we have Forbidden Droplet, which can affect up to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. We have a ton of interruption and interaction here. And all of this was done with a kind of a eh hand. Right? This is a pretty great field. But let's reset it. Let's see what it looks like. Let's try another one. So we got the King Sark with double with Harp and Nightmare. That's a great start. Because what you do is you go King Sark. You pitch to a jump. Msteady. And you pitch to a jump happy. And now you've got everything. So what you'll do is you'll Special summon Imseti. You'll special summon Happy. Then you'll overlay these two to give you number 90. With that protection from Nibiru, Banish Harp, summon Girsu, dump symbol, uh, use Nightmare, dump the wand, use the wand, summon the harp, link to Galatea. Galatea will shuffle back in this. This is the crescendo moment. So you set crescendo here. Um, and then one of the things you'd want to make sure you do is always put this in the zone that Galatea points to, typically in the far left. So what you're going to do here is you're going to have Galatea pointed here so it's protected from destruction. Uh, you have all this for your graveyard for next turn. You have a monster negate. Uh, they're a light and a dark, so it's a little harder to deal with. you got the crescendo for the... You know, the negation and banish. You've got Droll and Lockbird. So you've got three forms of interaction. And there are three impactful forms of interaction. Is this perfect? Absolutely not. This is not the greatest hand ever. And you obviously, you could have used these two to get into your uh, Fiendsmith plays. Which is also completely fine. Uh, which could have bridged everything. But it's up to you on what you want to do. If you want to play around things like Nibiru, this is the right way to do it. And this hand played around things like Droll and Lockbird as well. So if you're playing against like... The uh, Snake Eye deck, Ash is a little bit harder to use here because it's, you know, it is what it is. But in this instance, even if they nib you and you let, like, it happens, you just banish the Symbol Skeleton, you summon right back out Galatea, and you've still got a, two forms of interruption. And you got Droll, and if they deal with your back row and everything, you've got another King Sark to bring all these guys back. Which is really cool. That you have so much interaction, it's not even funny. But that's kind of how the deck operates, is it's all about maximizing little interaction. Um, and as you've noticed, I've been keeping two to three cards in my hand at all times. Like, that's the pretty insane part about this, is that it's not what you'd expect it to be. It's a little bit stronger than, than, than you would think. And with the Orcus package, your recursion is insane. Your grind game is really, really strong. And yeah, you can absolutely cut Dingirsu down by one to open up more slots if you want. But I think it's a really solid lineup. But lads, that's going to do it for this deck profile on Fiendsmith Orcist. Um, I have been working really, really hard on this deck. If you couldn't tell, I've been taking a lot of theory from the Snake Eye Fiendsmith, from Yvel's Fiendsmith, uh, from Horus decks, from everything. And just kind of, this is what I came up with. I think it's really neat. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. We are back, baby, uh, after a month hiatus because life. Um, so, yeah, come on in. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out the Discord. Hit the member button if you haven't already. And until next time, lads, as always, good fun. Have luck.